All right, welcome. Today I will be showing you a build for one monk, eleven ranger. Now I'm not going to get too far into the gear here. You can take a quick look if you know anything about the gear in this game, but I will show you this. A taste of what is to come later. And as you see, not only did I just kill several guys, I did a lot of damage. Now, how do we get there? That was a single whirlwind, which is something you get from taking Hunter 11. The the subclass we're taking is Hunter. So here at level three, you don't have many of the items that you need to make this build start happening. So you're gonna basically just take good hunter items. Now you take the Ranger Knight um, feature from Hunter, as well as the Colossus Slayer feature. This is 1d8 extra damage per round, basically. And that's not too bad, as long as you target the right guys. Um, as you see for stats, it's, you know, you only need two in, uh, 14 in the deck because you're going to be wearing medium armor in the early part of the game. 16 con, 17 strength. You can get this to 18 with the hag hair, but later we're going to see that we raise it with a feat. For now, we can look at seeing the uh, vision of the absolute. Blinds target on a spear. I like to use this early game. It's very nice. Um, you're going to use your bonus actions off in a Hunter's Mark anyway, so this is an extra use of Hunter's Mark. It also is an uh, advantage against monstrosity types, which can come up. Moondrop Pendant, 50% or less you can not get opportunity attack and let you get out of combat or where you need to be. This also helps you get where you need to be because you gain momentum, which momentum is 5 extra movement speed. And... Uh, that's for three turns, so it's per turn, meaning at the first turn you get 15 extra movement. <clears throat> now, I'm also, I also have this cloak, but I don't really count it as part of the build because this is only if you're playing the Dark Urge that you would have this cloak at all. But if you do, then yes, this is the item you're going to be wearing. And then Gloves of Power, great early game gloves. You don't really have many options, as you see. And so we'll move right on from there because it is immediately after that we get to see the build really shine. <clears throat> now, technically, this build can start at level four, even three if you really wanted to push it. But it's a little too risky at that point. And I, so I like to start at more around five or six, depending when you can get the key items and how you play through the act one. These are all gotten in act one. And... These are the three most key items to the build, and a fourth honorable mention. So the first is Leviathar Scourge. The whole build is based around this item. It grants necrotic re resistance. It says it twice for some reason, but you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> and it deals an additional 1 to 6 necrotic damage to nearby targets, including the wielder. Now, including the wielder is bad, because that means you're taking 1 to 6 damage every attack. But, it's actually halved, and the, the halving rounds favorably for you so they actually need they only can do one to three damage to you and it's generally not not the higher number it's, it's harder to get three they can only get three damage on a six is basically what i'm saying and the reason that is important is because you also wear the adamantine splint armor now you can like i said you can get this a little earlier but i usually get around five or six and the important part of the adamantine splint is all incoming damage is reduced by two now, that, that's not a lot of damage, but it happens after resistance. So if you have fire resistance, or if you have any other kind of resistance, like let's say necrotic, then this will have the damage, and then you'll take the two off. So when you take one to six, you're actually taking, like I said, one to three minus two. So <laughs> the only way you'll take any damage from it is if you roll a six. So with those two items together, what this really says is on each swing, you have a 1 in 6 chance of taking 1 damage, which is not too bad. Much better than taking 1 to 6 on every swing. 
Now, besides this being powerful in area effect, this item, Falar Aluve, is used to make it even stronger. This is used as part of many different combos, but specifically because it has this ability, the Falar Shriek. Now, this is a 20-foot aura around you that for five turns does these effects. 1d4 penalty to mental saves and 1d4 thunder damage to all creatures in the aura. And that's for, that's for every time they take damage, even if your allies hit them. So first of all, this is an amazing item on any character because it helps your entire team. But in this build, it's even better because you're going to get extra instances of necrotic damage. And now because you're getting all these instances of damage, I'll show you the fourth honorable mention I mentioned, <laughs> the Sparkle Hands. <clears throat> this is why we add the Monk level. If you look now, we're five Ranger, one Monk, because we wanted the extra attack from Ranger five. But now we have the one level of Monk. And this is so that on hit with an unarmed attack, you gain Lightning Charges. That doesn't, that's not very common. Lightning Charges are only given on a couple items, and they're usually for things like dashing or casting a spell. And they also usually take up slots that you can't afford to lose. This taking up a glove slot is actually extremely favorable. And because you have two different ways to bonus action unarmed attack, flurry of blows, and then the one that comes after doing a normal attack, you have many ways to stack the lightning charges. And you don't want to stack them to get the payoff at five charges, as a, in case people don't know. If you see here, if you gain five charges, they are consumed the next time you deal damage. You actually don't want that. You want to get around four or less charges and then just allow them to add one lightning damage on each instance of damage you do. And also, if you look here, these gloves are great because they also offer advantage against foes wearing metal armor and metal constructs. The constructs is a bonus, but the foes wearing metal armor is a real thing because especially in act three, there's a lot of them. And um, the higher AC guys are generally higher AC because of their armor. Now let's see how this looks in combat. So I surprised him. And remember, this is low level, so these numbers are not too bad for the level. Now, even with just Falar, the Flurry right there did a good 21. It said it only do 8 to 14, but again, certain things add in ways that people don't think about. Now also, Falar is getting a plus one bonus here to the 1d4 thunder damage because of Ring of Absolute Force. If the wearer bears the Absolute brand, they deal one additional thunder damage with thunder damage spells and attacks. This technically counts. So this ring is actually very important and will stay in the build also for the rest of the run. Now if you see, that's one, two, three, four items. The, all four of these items are actually in the build for the rest of the run. So again, very, very early start, very great. Now because I did those flurries, I got four charges. Look at that, the exact amount I want to be at. Because both flurry hit attacks hit. That's two chances to hit, and two chances to get lightning charges. Even if only one hit, that would be great too. Now let's look at the damage on this. 8, 12, 13, um, 5, 6, 9, 22. 22 swing. I hit only one guy. Well, actually, no, sorry. Part of that's the nest. So he, he got... This nest, we'll take out the three. He took 19. That's why he's at one. And so because, of, you know, these two being spaced out, I can't hit them both with my AOE. I can hit the, I can hit the objects, but that doesn't seem to help too much, right? Now... I'll start to show you where some of the other fun of this build comes in because besides raw damage numbers Which you'll see that once these guys are grouped up. I get some pretty high ones Let's see what happens When I do something like take a potion and just put it on the ground right there right next to me So first now attack this guy And miss of course 
and miss, of course. So, because of the double miss, we're gonna make sure we get more tries. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now, not only did I destroy the potion of healing, heal myself, but I also got dipped in poison from that necklace we talked about earlier. Actually, I'm not sure we talked about but this necklace right here, where it does one to four poison damage if you if the wearer is healed. That can be healed through potions or through uh, spells, any means. Except for weapons, actually, that heal yourself. They don't count, but we'll get to that later. Now, again, this is one attack now. Look, oh, look, suddenly the, it's hitting many, many times. This is much more than 20 damage now. And it's because it's hitting multiple of these guys hit four of them in one swing. This, this becomes a bit of a problem if your team is around, but that's why positioning is everything. So, because of the Deathstalker mantle, I also get to go invisible, but... Oh, did they all run? Where'd they go? Regardless, we, we see that already the build works quite well. Uh, I wore Boots of Speed at this point because it's another way to get closer to enemies. And I'm wearing Crusher's Ring for speed as well. And I'm still wearing the Haste Helm. And I also put on the Bow of Awareness for the initiative at this point because I wasn't using Hunter's Mark too much. Especially when you're dual wielding, Hunter's Mark is, can be used, but it's more often that you're going to actually just attack with the offhand or do the, pun the punches at this at, at, by, the, by here. Um, so let's see how things change once you get to level 8. There's only really the addition of two items here, but they both increase your damage quite a lot. <clears throat> the first actually was a replacement for the boots that I didn't expect to be quite so good. Um, they're called the Cinder Shoes. Now, the Cinder Shoes, whenever you burn an enemy, you gain two turns of heat. Now this generally is pretty bad, because burning an enemy is hard, especially as a melee character. And heat isn't extremely useful for most builds. You need a way to, pay, to do fire damage to get rid of it, otherwise you're just taking damage. But, I found out that as you saw with the health potion, if we look to our friend here, and I attack him while I have an alchemist fire on the ground, it blows up and burns. <laughs> Actually, that time it didn't add heat to me though. Let's see. Now, oh, he got wet, so he's immune to burning. Excuse me. Doesn't, so it doesn't work in that instance when they get wet, because they need to burn. At least you get to see firsthand what it can be like. Now, I also get to show you something else right here. If you use a smite, I'm a tiefling, so I have innate racial smites. Now, you'll see, I gained heat because I blew up the alchemist fire and burned this guy. But also, you'll see that. There's a little, there's radiant damage in here now. This wasn't here before. As well as, if you look for the Willing Whip here, it's actually here twice. I'm, we're gonna track it by the times I take damage, or don't, for that matter. I took one here, because I took that roll to six. But right here it procced once, but right here it procced again. Now, I only attacked one time right there to get those two procs. But, the reason it proc twice is because I used a smite. Now, smites will proc AoE attacks on weapons like Leviathan Scourge or Punch Drunk Bastard twice. Because it'll count the initial attack and the extra damage of the smite as two separate entities, and each of them will proc the explosion. So, the first extra explosion we get, it adds necrotic and now it adds Radiant, and it also technically would add Lightning if I had done the punches first, but for sake of 
getting this example, we didn't do that. Now, the Radiant comes from the Callous Glow Ring. The wearer deals an additional two points of damage against creatures that are illuminated. Now, it doesn't say it, but that's Radiant Damage. That Radiant Damage adds on every instance of damage. The fire, the fire, and you see, even when I hit them with the... Uh, I'll show you here. Even if you throw an Alchemist Fire... Well, actually, the objects around it still take the Radiant Damage. So it adds on to basically everything, as long as they're illuminated. Now, how do you get illuminated? You get light on your weapon. Now, if you notice here, I have two things, elemental weapon and light. We'll talk about light first. You can switch on the ring, guiding light, and it casts the spell light. You can then switch it off and leave it off of you, and you still have the light buff. So it's a way, even if you don't have another character who can cast the cantrip, to keep it on permanently. The other thing, Elemental Weapon, is from the weapon Drake Throat Glaive. Now you see it has Draconic Elemental Weapon here. What you can actually do is drop a weapon on the ground, and then use this buff targeting the weapon on the ground, and give it an Elemental property, until Long Rest. I chose Fire on my weapon, because now, anytime I hit someone, I can choose to expend my Heat Charges with Heat Convergence, and deal additional fire damage after spreading all this nice, nice fire. Now what's also great is, you can do things like continuously drop them and damage enemies. Now this guy won't be damaged because he's wet right now, but we'll see it come up a lot more later. Now at level 10, there are some minor additions, but otherwise, I think we've hit the core of the build. And the only time we'll see a giant increase is once you hit 11 Ranger, which you can hit either at 11 or 12. If you keep Monk and don't respec, you'll have to wait till 12. But if you really want to get Whirlwind at 11, you can do it. Respec at 11 to Ranger 11, Hunter 11 that is, and um, take Monk as your 12th level. Now the reason that is, is because Whirlwind increases the damage of this a lot. And I'll explain that once we get there. First, we'll see here, we have all the same gear, except we've, we, uh, I, I didn't show this last time, but we did change the amulet out. I changed to Amulet of the Harpers. You can keep really whatever amulet you want, but I felt that you needed a little more defense in the build. So this gave you advantage on wisdom, so that meant it's harder to be held personed, and it gives you shield once per long rest, but plus five to AC once for long rest is still one round that you probably aren't getting hit. One other important thing we upgrade here is the helmet. Horns of the Berserker. Now, the other helmet was good for movement, but this, one of the problems in this build is that it's hard to hit people sometimes. And Horns of the Berserker adds plus two to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have already taken damage. Because you're AoEing so much, a lot of creatures are gonna often have taken damage. And because you can drop the fire, you can assure that they have taken damage before you even spend actions. I switched the cloak out to cloak of protection also because I, I prefer the AC and saving throws to the invis, especially when I'm trying to solo things. And the armor you upgrade to Reaper's Embrace. It still has the incoming damage reduced by two, but the other abilities on it are just a little better than the reeling from the adamantine splint, in my opinion. It also has a little bit higher AC. Otherwise, all the other items are the same, and so let's just see how the damage numbers have increased. It's not too drastic of a change. So we get the flurry in. And so now we have the lightning charges, and we'll see how the whole stack of attacking a single target works and looks now. So, we'll, we'll drop an Alchemist Fire. In fact, you know, why not drop a couple? And just to make sure things go nicely, we're gonna split off a Potion of Speed. We're gonna drop that too. Drop it right next to me, right, right here. So, now we have the Lightning Charges, but we don't have any heat, so how are we gonna get the heat? Remember, we gotta attack. 
So I'm gonna do a smite so we can even proc it twice. Oh, and well, there's that. <laughs> so I didn't get to get the haste potion because it actually blew up to the fire. I did get the heat though. I got multiple stacks of heat. I could have killed them with that after, but I didn't need to because let's see, that was one attack and it did all this damage. Starting from here. <laughs> now that's quite a lot. I mean, this is the initial hit he, he took. Plus this, plus that, plus that, plus this. All because the, the little explosions and the big explosions now. This seems like pretty good damage, but it's about to go nuts. Because right now we're still dealing with right there, you saw it did a lot more because the smite made it proc twice. That means it AoE'd both guys twice. Once the, it can proc more than two times, the damage in exponentially increases. And that happens when you have Whirlwind and more than two targets. So with Whirlwind, there's a, a few special things now. Every target in an AoE with this Whirlwind will add a new explosion of Willing Whip. We'll track it again by seeing how many times I am struck. start off, we'll get our lightning charges. <clears throat> but, so basically, right now we'll see it, I'll, I'll show it just the two guys. There's two guys. Oh, I missed one. And so we see, since I missed one actually, only one proc of the Willing Whip happened. So, um, if I had hit both, two procs would have happened. If there were three targets, there were enemies, you can't use them, stationary targets like these. But if there were three enemies, three procs of the Willing Whip would have happened. So, that is where things start to increase pretty high. I'll, I'll show you the example of five in a moment. First, let's address the last couple item upgrades. It's the armor upgrades one more time to hell dusk armor probably one of the best armors in the game great ac um it gives innate resistance to fire which we don't need but also res innate resistance to burn we didn't quite need that either because we already had resistance to fire and one to four fire damage does nothing to us but the three less damage from all sources is good because versus two less damage that means now the willing whip cannot do damage to us since we resist it it also makes enemies burn if the caster tries to cast a spell and we make the saving throw, which is great. Now, I, I also respect at some point, once I started wearing the big heavy armor, to have 10 dex and 14 wisdom. It made it a little harder to get held personed and such. And I like to be mobile. Now, like I said, the second feat we took, oh sorry, the first feat we took was dual wielder. I forgot to mention this earlier, but that's how you wield these two weapons. And the second feat we take is Tavern Brawler. Tavern Brawler is so we can get up to 18 strength, and then also so our unarmed attacks do a little extra damage. It'll do extra four per punch. Now let's let's go now to the example I showed before. The spin. <clears throat> One other item I put in there that I switched my cape to the Cinder Moth cape. It makes it so that if an enemy attacks you within seven feet, they have a chance to start burning. This is important because I also took Unstable Blood. It's a buff you get in Act 3, if you have followed a certain story chain, that makes your blood unstable and explosive. If anyone burning enters the blood, they will ignite it. So if a person hits you in melee, the blood gets created, and then if you have the Cinder Moth cape, Cinder Moth cloak, excuse me, it will um, 
burn them and it automatically ignite the blood. So it's a good way to start fires below you, which is how I had this here. Now you see here we have five targets, max heat stacks, we have lightning charges, the only thing left to do is spin. And now since we know the context, let's look at these damage numbers again. So, again, we're going to track by willing whips real quick. Notice how many times it hits me. One, two, three, four, five. It went five times. There were five targets. They each took five total explosions. Each of these explosions goes for roughly... Like, let's see, this guy, yeah, about 11 damage, you know, 10 to 11 damage per, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's half of it, right? So it's about 20 damage, about 20, 30 damage, or a little 25 for an average total explosion for the whole little group, but they're each taking that 25 damage five times. So that's 125 damage on average, and that's not counting all the Falar procs all the initial whirlwind procs the heat added seven damage it doesn't add on the fire elemental because he's immune to fire but it adds seven damage on everyone else in the whirlwind you also get the lightning damage the radiant damage adding on everything the thunder damage comes a little later in the equation but look it adds on all these numbers too and each of the times the thunder damage adds it adds lightning and radiant again and so this is just the Willing Whip here. This is the Falar Prox for the Willing Whip. Look how many there are. And again, so this is important because it's, pro it's doing five total explosions. In those five explosions, each one is hitting a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five people, of course going hitting five people and each time they're hitting five people that's proccing Falar five times it's proccing the ring ten times because it's hitting the first time and then on the uh, on Falar it's doing the lightning as many times it's just a giant stack of numbers uh, the only thing I say to add beyond this is you can also add Ill illithid powers to make it even more So you can definitely use the black hole power to bring guys in easier, but I don't like to make builds with illithid powers for videos and such anyway, because they can you can make any build around illithid powers, they're very strong. Regardless, here's something fun you can do with items that hopefully we can show off this time. Now, I'll just do a normal attack, but because of the AoE, Notice that all the potions exploded. <clears throat> There's a lot of different interesting ways to do this. You can heal yourself. Uh, in this instance, they went on the ground next to me. But you can also add all kinds of buffs. Like, I had the invis potion, so... I was able to become invis as soon as I attacked. There's a lot of ways to apply that, and even though they can look for you, they might never find you, and you could also just have a party with you. I'm doing this, you know, with one character. Usually you have three others. But, yeah, because of this, there's a lot of options with potions and things you can do. And, I mean, even if you just wanted to start spreading fire everywhere, you can do that, too. Always keep stocked up and um, try to save them for later acts when it'll be a lot more impactful. Otherwise, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and ex the idea of Explosion Ranger. Uh, thanks for watching.